Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. In this video, we are going to take our giant, huge, I think 69 line program and split it across multiple files. Now, it's not a huge important thing to do right now, but as we start growing our application and adding more classes, it's gonna become pretty unbearable if everything is in just one giant file. So we need to split this across multiple files to make sure we can scale our application. It is quite the process and I'll do my best to make it nice and simple and hopefully we get to the end result. But before we get started, please check out our sponsor Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. All right, so the very first thing you should do is make sure you're organized. So be inside of a folder. If you're mixed with a bunch of other projects, it's gonna get really disgusting really fast. So make sure we are in a folder and all you have is main.cpp or whatever your application is called. Then what you wanna do is you wanna create a new file for this class here. So we can call it user.cpp and then we're going to create another one and it's going to be called user.h. User.h is the header file that's going to contain all of the declarations. User.cpp will contain all of the definitions. So what we're gonna do is inside a main, we're going to take all of this except the main function. So leave main inside of this, this file here and we're going to cut it and we're going to paste it inside a user.cpp. So we're basically going to offload all the function definitions to the user.cpp file. Now inside a main, I'm going to re-include those files. So we're going to say include io stream and include string. Now as you build more complex applications, you will need to be more particular about what you're including, particularly if you're working with a large team. But for this small project, it's not a huge concern. So if you include something more than once or include more than you really need, it's not the end of the world. It's better to have those includes than to have a bunch of errors trying to get everything to work. So the next step is inside a user.cpp, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to take that class. So at the top, we have this user class and we're going to copy it. Don't cut it, leave it inside a user.cpp and we're going to go over to user.h and we're going to paste it in here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of any function bodies and replace them with semicolons. So this is just saying that these functions exist, we're not actually defining them here. So when you're done, it should look a little something like this. Beautiful. Now I'm going to minimize this just to give us a little bit extra space, maybe that'll help it to be a little bit more readable. So that is our class here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to include this header file from all of our C++ files that need it. So inside of main.cpp, we're just going to say include user.h, and we're going to put the same line inside of user.cpp. Now to protect us from including this twice, we can actually put some, some protection here using preprocessor directive. Just say if and def for if not defined. What are we going to define? We're going to define user underscore h, so if it's not defined, what we're gonna do is say define user underscore h, and then at the end, we're just going to say and if. So if this is all completely new to you, I did have an earlier video on multiple file compilation. You might wanna check that out because that's gonna give you a lot of the context for this. So that's basically going to prevent including this file multiple times. Now we are going to go back to the user.cpp file, which is going to have all of our function definitions, and we are going to change some of the stuff that is in here. So first let's open this class. First thing, we're going to get rid of the actual class keywords and the curly brace. So go up there at the top and remove it as well as down here. We're also going to get rid of any data members. So we don't need these here. We just need to keep the functions. So get rid of anything that's just a variable. We don't need this public keyword either, so get rid of that. Basically, we're just going to define each of the functions in this file. Now, we also don't need this static keyword, so get rid of that. Anything that's static, you can get rid of that static keyword, which to me is a little bit confusing, but just do it anyways, as well as friend. And then last thing is we're going to prefix each one of these functions with user. So up here, we can say user with a capital U because that's the class name, colon, colon. Oh, this is quite the process. 
Yes, even the constructors and the destructors we are going to prefix with user. All right, now let's compile. There's a 99.99% .99 chance I missed something. So let's just see. We'll say G++ main.cpp and user.cpp. And make sure you use C++11. Wow, <laughs> it actually compiled. So let's run it, see if it works. And what is actually going to happen? It's going to ask us for an input for the user and then it's going to output that user. So we'll just run this and say, our name is Caleb Curry and we are a silver member and it outputs it. So it appears as if everything works the original way we had it, but now look how clean our file is. There's no pollution and we can just kind of ignore user.cpp and user.h, just consider those as resources we just pull into our application by saying include user.h. So it's a nice simple way to keep your files organized and it's going to make you be able to scale your application much more. Now going from a single file and splitting it up is a very complicated process. If you start from scratch with a new class, it might be a little bit more organized and clean. So basically what you need to do is you need to create an implementation file, which is the class.cpp, and then the header file, which is the class.h. Inside of the header file is where you create the class as well as all of the members but you don't actually define them, you just declare that they exist. Data members, specifically these variables here, will go inside of the header file. All of the function definitions, the bodies of the functions, are going to go in the implementation file, which is the user.cpp in this situation. Each one is going to be prefixed by the class name so it can associate it with the, the declarations from the header file. That is how it works when we remove keywords like friend and static. It still works the same way because it basically makes an association to this function here. Any related functions that are not necessarily part of the user class, those can still go in the implementation file. So you could, if you wanted, define some extra functions down here, similar to how we did with these operator overloads. But those were, in fact, friend functions, so it would be appropriate to put them in this file but feel free to add other functions that might be related to the user in this file if you want. But if that's too confusing for you, then you can definitely make a user function collection and store that inside of another file. So the next appropriate step for multiple file compilation would be to make a make file. We talked about make files earlier on in the series. If you wanna know the details of that, I would challenge you to try to make a make file for this application just to get a little bit more practice. That's all I got for you guys in this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about inheritance and polymorphism, which is a huge part of object-oriented programming, and I am pretty excited, so be sure to go check that video out. Be sure to subscribe as well, and I'll see you in the next video.